Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, Mike Thornton's find of the week was a company called Create Pro, who will update your cheese grater Mac into a trash can. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you get to keep all the loveliness of storage and PCI slots. So guess where I am today? Yes, you've guessed it. Um, I am with Rich from Create Pro, and this is my Mac, which we are about to do the business on. We are. We so, are. So tell us a little in bit. In the nicest possible way. In the nicest possible way. So tell us a little bit about how Create Pro came to being. Okay. Um, okay, well, to start off, we've been uh, refurbing Mac, well, Macs in general, um, from MacBooks to oh, G5s and, and even before that for about sort of the last eight to ten years. Um, but it was it was kind of strictly uh, just you know refurbing, so there was not really any request for it to be any more than that. Um, we didn't feel that we needed to do any more than that. So machines would come in, we'd clean them up, test them, new OS, that kind of thing, um, and then you know back out the door so to speak. Um, that was up until about two or three years ago. Um, the Mac Pro Classic, as we'll refer to it now, was in decline because Apple hadn't done anything with it in quite some time. The 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 industry, be it pro or even consumer, um, seemed to be getting quite tetchy about the fact that nobody, including Apple, could answer when the next machine was going to come out. So the iMac seemed to be doing its job okay, um, and I'm sure the graphic designers out there are very happy with them. But anybody in in film, post grading, audio, so on and so forth, uh, you know, they need a bit more than a quad-core processor, uh, 16 gig of RAM and whatnot. So we'd always sold the Mac Pro, uh, but I took it upon upon myself to start doing a more bespoke option uh, that, that, that a lot of people seem to be quite into. So by bespoke, custom hard drive arrays, um, changing the RAM, you know, larger amounts of RAM, all pretty basic stuff, but nobody could get that anywhere. Uh, Apple then discontinued the Mac Pro in late 2012 um, to much uproar. And that meant that people like us were really the only option for where uh, anybody could come to. So fast forward about six months, Apple at the keynote speech uh, announced that they're going to bring out the trash can the Mac Pro 6.1 cylinder, uh, which looked great, apart from the fact that it's about the size of my hand, uh, holds one flash storage module, only 64 gig of RAM, he's saying only, but you know, that was still half of what the 5.1 could handle. Um, custom built graphics cards that can't be changed, no PCIe slots, uh, and no hard drive bays, there's, there's no room for any other storage. So at that point, um, we kind of thought, okay, maybe there's maybe there's something we can do here. Quite exciting. Next morning, and this is just after the announcement of the Mac Pro, so it hadn't even been released yet. The new one, uh, the phones just went off the hook. Lots of panic buying. Um, companies just saying, look, you know, that we'd never dealt with before. We'd normally we just need one, but we'll buy five. We'll put some, you know, we'll just have them sitting in the back in case something goes wrong. Um, it, that wasn't rocket science to us that we really needed to up the ante um, and really look at the sector, the, the, the void that had been created um, by, by effectively a workstation being replaced by uh, a really nice designer ashtray. I mean, there's no two ways about it. They are killer quick. They are. They're amazing. They are fast, very, yeah. very fast machines. Yeah. But the thing we've been talking about is you, you now have a central... Hub, ashtray, trash can, call it what you will, yes. with many tentacles. Yes. Now, studios are a place of cables. Now, let's not pretend they're not. Yeah. But there is still something to be said about having four drive bays, mm. PCI slots, and everything mm. in here. You're never going to eradicate cabling. We know that. Yeah. yeah. But it does seem daft to have more than you actually need. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, obviously, for the for the purpose of you, you have lovely, shiny HDX cards. You know, those really cheap 
little PCIe cards that yeah. slot into Macs yeah. and whatnot. Um, UAD cards. I know all of this stuff can be done externally now. Completely aware of that. We're not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes by that. But um, it's you know, another cable. It's another power supply. It's another... it's another it's another wedge of money as well, isn't it? Because you know, if you if you move to something that hasn't got PCIe cards and you've got PCIe cards, that involves an expansion chassis. Uh, they're brilliant, and we know that they always work. Right back to Magma days. Um, but it's another box of tricks. It's mm. another fifteen hundred pounds, two and a half thousand dollars, so on and so forth. So um, we started doing benchmarking tests um, and real world ones. You know, stuff that that is feasible in the field. So not just saying, okay, well you can play a game at this resolution, even though uh, you know you you produce music because that's not real world to us. So we started doing tests based on all different kinds of stuff. I think you guys are going to hopefully be doing some with your new super upgraded Mac Pro. Um, and we just found out that, that, that the actual CPU differences, so the raw power that we need for our plugins, channel strips, um, we're not just talking about how, you know, how nicely the timeline can glide along. We're actually talking about the real world stuff. There wasn't a lot of difference in the power. Um, a 3.46 Mac Pro 5.1, the classic tower, um, is approximately 5% behind the 2.7 12-core new Mac Pro. Um, apart from the fact that the new Mac Pro is about six and a half grand, um, we do an upgrade for 995 uh, sterling on if you've got a 2009 or higher eight core machine. So that's a thousand pounds, five percent lower on the CPU versus six and a half thousand pounds. You've still got all your expansion, you've still got those drive bays. Okay, you haven't got Thunderbolt. Okay, you know, we're not going to. We're not going to say that you've got everything, um, but you've got a PCIe bus, which mm. is effectively four times faster than Thunderbolt 2. People forget that as well. They do forget that. Um, yeah, it's kind of like it's just old tech now, isn't it? You know, oh, well, that, that can't be that good. It came out four or five years, well, longer than that. I mean, PCIe 2.0, which is in the Mac Pro, effectively came out, wow, seven years ago ne nearly now. Um but nevertheless, that's what graphics cards bolt into. It's and still pretty blooming quick. Yeah, well, I, I, I think it, it rocks in at like uh, 80 uh, gigabits a second compared to uh, Thunderbolt 2 being 20. There's a, there's a the phrase a no brainer in there. Yeah, so yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so tell us what we're going to do to my machine to take to take it from 2009 to 2015. Okay, so what we're going to do? Um, first of all, we're going to open it up and probably cough and splutter a bit because uh, no doubt there's there's some there's there's, there's remnants maybe, of me. There may be some <laughs> dust in there. Uh, those cheese grates have got a lot of holes and a lot of fans. So we'll uh, we'll give it a quick clean out. Um, we're going to take out the daughter board, which is the tray that holds the processors, um, or processor in your case. Yours, yours is a single processor system. Um, because it's 2009, we need to upgrade the firmware. In English, that just means that we're going to run a bit of software that will change the system identifier to a Mac Pro 5.1 instead of 4.1. Um, the hardware within the 4.1 or the 2009 Mac Pro is identical to the hardware in the 2010 and 2012. There is zero difference. Nothing is different, okay? Same stuff. Um, Apple just over time just gave it a newer name when faster processors came out. So we're going to run that. That doesn't interfere with anything, doesn't interfere with your software, anything like that. You can plug your hard drives out. We do the upgrade, plug them back in, it's going to all boot back up exactly the same. Um, we're going to upgrade the processor to a 3.46 six core because yours is a single processor syst uh, system. The main processor, uh, the, 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 the maximum speed is 3.46. You're on 2.66, so expect to see a massive boost there. You've got four cores at the moment. It's going to have six. Um, and a small note for Pro Tools users, if you are on Pro Tools 10 or earlier, weirdly, um, kind of weirdly, a single processor system acts better than a dual processor system. And that's because Pro Tools, Avid, uh, DigiDesign hadn't put in all the multi-threading into the software yet. So if you get a 3.466 core as you're going to get, using Pro Tools 10 or earlier, 
it will actually perform better than if you say you've got a 2.66 12 core. So right. worth bearing in mind. It's actually quite important. If There's a lot of studios that they're not going to upgrade to Pro Tools 11 for maybe another two years. They don't want to change their plugins. They're happy with Artaz. A million different reasons. Um, it actually can be, and it's cheaper. Mm. So this isn't, you know, I'm happy to say that it's cheaper. Uh, you're going to have a few quid left for the pub later on that night. So always a bonus. Always a bonus. Um, we're also going to upgrade the graphics card. Um, the graphics card, there's there's loads and loads of options. With the new Mac Pro, you're you've got ATI cards in there, and they are monstrous. They're amazing. You've got two of them as well. Um, but then they're, they're not standard PCIe cards. Apple have custom designed them to fit into that cylinder, and that's groovy. That's great. But um, you are actually stuck with ATI cards now. I know that we're mostly talking about audio, um, but you know you work in Final Cut making these lovely videos and whatnot. Um, if you use Adobe apps, Premiere, After Effects, if you're using DaVinci Resolve for coloring, um, you know, so on and so forth. Even Photoshop will benefit from having an upgraded graphics card. Um, it's going to do nothing for your audio. All of a sudden, that mix isn't going to sound 10 times better. <laughs> um, it may look a bit it cleaner look on the screen, clean, yeah. um, but, but it, it's not going to change anything there. So um, if you do also do some film work uh, on your Pro Tools rig or on your audio rig, um, it's also worth looking at that. We're going to put in a GTX 780, um, approximately about 100,000 times faster than your uh, GT120 that's in there at the moment. Um, it's it's like night and day. Chalk and cheese. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, going to do a lovely addition to the machine there. Um, and other than that, I mean, you know, there's a lot more upgrades that we could talk about. Um, I won't bore everyone to death with it. You can just go onto our website. There is so much stuff. Um, www.create.pro. Um, good, good link there. Good link there. <laughs> um, and there, But there, there's, there's absolutely tons of upgrades that you can do to it. So many, so many. There's obviously hardware upgrading going on here. Yep. Um, but people, and let's face it, I'm a drummer when all said and done, so I'm scared of software updates and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Hence, I'm still running Snow... No, 10.8, no, 10 you've got Mountain Line. Mountain Goat. Mountain well, Goat, yeah, he's got the Mountain right. Goat. Right, yeah. but I don't at this stage want to go to Mavericks because of all the, the horror stories we yep. heard. Yeah, And you were saying you're not entirely convinced by... Yeah, Yosemite. Yosemite, Yosemite yeah. Just confuse things even further. 10.10, 10, as they call it. Um, but when I do that, and obviously at some point I'm going to yeah. have to, yeah, yeah. What am I going to have to think, oh, hang on, I haven't got a standardised Mac system. I've no. got a separate graphics card. I've got to update the drivers. I've got to update this, update that. Absolutely not. I mean, um, processor and RAM, no change at all. The, the OS X just literally sees a faster processor and RAM as we all know RAM's just RAM you put it in sees more exactly the same with the processor the only thing that can happen um, is with graphics cards your one it doesn't apply to but on, we do two or three really high end graphics cards so it's not even really relevant to this conversation but nevertheless I've got no problem saying it they take um, certain drivers to run so it's not relevant in this case um, but you know we do an Nvidia Titan Black and a Titan graphics card which is immense really immense um, and that needs Nvidia drivers to run okay um, some graphics cards also need to be on a certain OS for when they kick in so in your case um, the GTX 780 that you're going to use needs um, 10.8.5 which is what you've got on there Mountain Goat Mountain Lion um, and it, and that's fine. If you was on an earlier OS, um, it, it wouldn't work. So we're always here to talk and help and chat. Um, but in terms of just CPU and RAM upgrades, SSD upgrades, um, you know, hard drive upgrades, nothing. It's all good. I can safely say the process has been incredibly painless um, from that initial email kind of contact mm. with um, Tom yep. and just chatting through what we're going to do and the number of op upgrade options, things like that. Um, yeah, so what's going to happen next is we're going to show you some of the actual upgrading happening um, and Rich getting his fingers dirty. Sorry about that. Um, and then probably, haven't decided this yet, we'll cut to another video 
which will be back at the studio and we'll be running some tests, the real world stuff, um, geek bench and all those sort of things don't really apply so much in the Pro Tools mm. world. I'm quite looking forward to running the new graphics card to get um, with um, Final Cut, mm -hmm. probably this afternoon when I start editing this video. Yes. But what I'm really excited about is running things like the 11 test and the Digiverb, the Dverb test, um, which we know within the community are sort of fairly highly regarded as the kind of the benchmark Pro Tools session tests. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, Rich, Absolute pleasure. Thank you so You're much. You're more than welcome. Um, great, great to chat and even great to get that thing upgraded. Yeah, yeah. So um, I look forward to switching that thing on this afternoon in anger. Great. I've been James. Let's crack on. I've been James for Product Expert here at Create Pro.